Hello, hello. How is everybody? Hello. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Is the sound high enough? Yay. How is everybody? Hi, Field. Hi, Storm. Yes, the sound is good. Uh, just let me know before we start because I want to turn it up a bit, but I've got my air conditioner on. So I just want to make sure it's not too loud. Can you hear me and not the air conditioner? Hello, 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 hello. Testing, testing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Fancy schmancy. Yes, because we have a very special guest with us tonight, today, tonight, on our special guest day. Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, I am so over the moon to oh, tell you about our amazing guest. He rocks. Uh, I've been watching Farscape, all his beautiful episodes, and he is just ah, so phenomenal. His name is Duncan Young, and uh, he starred as Axacor, the Diagnosen, and Empress Dalik. Uh, he wore all these amazing prosthetics. He's a phenomenal actor as well. So he's hanging out in Zoom and he wants to come and say hello. So is everybody ready to meet the beautiful Duncan Young? I need to hear some Froyas. Froya! Ah, yeah! Froya, Froya, we love Duncan. Duncan, Duncan, Duncan. Yay! All right, get ready. Hello. Hello. Hello, Gigi. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm extremely well. Extremely nice well. Nice to see you. Nice, yeah, to, nice see to see you. Nice to see you too. What's going on down under? Well, you know, we're 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 slowly breaking free of the shackles of, of ISO. Which <laughs> is, well, unless you live in unless you live in Victoria and everyone everyone's being locked away again fenced off and oh so what happened what's going on oh well you know we we've done pretty well i'm not sure how much of the news you get over there but uh but yeah we've we've done pretty well as far as uh combating the the spread of the virus but uh but melbourne's or you know the suburbs just around melbourne's had a little bit of a spike but i think compared to compared to what you know we're seeing in the media uh, you know, as, as far as things are going on over there, I think we're, we've, yeah, well, we've done pretty, pretty well. And, you know, that may be a degree of uh, management and, and a degree of luck. So we'll see how we go. I, I, I heard that, uh, I don't know whether this is a Facebook thing or an Aussie thing, but I heard that, uh, because my sister lives on Magnetic Island and she said there's, oh, there's a whole now, they've made up whole new language of slang, just especially for the good old coronavirus. I was like, yeah. that's nice. Good job. Good job, Aussies. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, you know, on an island is where you want to be at the moment, I think, just, you know, so you can really, really keep those borders tight. I know. Seriously. It's very, <laughs> I, I, I said before when we were chatting, uh, before we, we hit the, the, the Twitch live, I, I kind of said it's kind of trippy because a lot of the things in Farscape uh, sort of ringing true now in our everyday life. I feel like I'm living in an episode of Farscape. It's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aliens without, and viruses and chips and <laughs> without all the makeup and and latex. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Uh so what's been going on in your life at the moment? So are you still in the acting mode or have, have you where are you? Well, at? not not so much. So I I've um, you know, after so what it you know, after, so it's it feels like it feels like a lifetime ago those uh those days spent uh, climbing into that fabulous uh, that fab fabulous suit created by Dave and Lou, so I um, yeah I, I've I've done I did lots of bits and pieces after after Farscape we we had um, we had a whole period of time where you know lots of the lots of American films were being shot down here so us you know us jobbing Aussie actors tended to to get wheeled out for some of the the smaller roles in in those types of things done a bit of theater um, but I haven't done anything for a long time because I've been running running my own business uh, delivering corporate training so we were over in the states last year doing a doing a big program for 
for Telstra, who's one of the Australian telecommunications companies, and but we employ lots of actors. So that's you know I'm really I'm really delighted that that I, I can play a part in keeping keeping some of my my friends and the fraternity of uh, of actors oh, good. employed. I, I'm glad yeah. we touched base then. I'll be like, Dad, Dad. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, feed, yeah. When feed when, me. when I need someone in LA, I'll be like, Gee. <laughs> I'll start swimming. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We so, won't make you do that. I listen, well, uh, with my isolation belly, I could actually probably, I could do with a bit of a swim. I don't know about that, that distance, but. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, your characters are phenomenal. I've been, I've been stalking you for the last couple of days and uh, I guess I want to kick it off with the diagnosis. And so, oh, well, actually, so originally, was your very first character Axacor? Is that, am I pronouncing Yeah, that that's correctly? right, that's right. Yeah, that that was really that was a really uh, strange sort of sequence of events because I got a call from I think I got a call from someone in production at Farscape and I had not I'd had you know I obviously I knew lots of people who who had worked on it uh, but I got a call from production saying oh, okay so um, we're going to see you next week for for a, and I was like what are you talking about <laughs> yeah someone someone had just neglected to tell tell me that I'd been I'd been cast in this in this gig that they were shooting out at, you know, and I'd heard about Farscape that they were shooting out at this this warehouse out at Homebush near the Olympic <laughs> Stadium, and it was all very kind of mysterious, and all these people were, you know, were, were, were getting these 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 jobs on this this weird sci-fi show that no one knew too much about. So anyway, yeah, so I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, I'll do that, and and, and I, so I turned up, and and they said, okay, so this is this is who you're going to be. You're going to be this. It was called a brain scarron. So I think that was the first time that they'd, <laughs> they'd sort of morphed the, the scarrons from those big sort of banana shaped heads into something that looked a little more, yeah, a little bit more human, although, you know, not entirely. And so, yeah, so I just rocked up and I was like, okay, you know, I'll do this. Um, and, and yeah, the, I remember the first, I remember the first part of the shoot, because I, I think I was, I think I was like in disguise. The scarron was in disguise. And so I had yes. this, this the, this huge great helmet on that you couldn't you couldn't see anything out of so i remember i spent the whole time looking down out of the bottom of the uh, out of the bottom of the mask because i thought all i need to do is hit my marks here so i was just looking down <laughs> and so you know so i wasn't looking at anyone i just spent the whole so time just making sure your, your head down your mask was still facing in the yeah, right yeah 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 so as far as as far as you know as it looked on the camera you know, the, I was moving the head around so it would sort of face towards. So it looked like I'm engaging and talking to the different characters. But but I'm just thinking, just just hit your mark. <laughs> because yeah. I think one of the I think the DAP said to me, look, you know, it's a really because it's always a really dark set. So the, the the little pools of light were really, you know, you you needed to get into them to make the to make the shot work. And um, actually, I, well, here's a here's a here's a fun fact. The the one of the uh, cinematographers that worked on Farscape was my, this maybe this is why I got the job. I never asked this question, but um, was my brother, Bruce Young. Bruce oh, good. I don't know if you remember yeah. Bruce. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so he would, he would always be like, Dunks, you know, just make sure you're getting the right spot. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, forward, got forward, it. Forward. Yeah, got it. Cool. But it was hilarious. Yeah. So That's then, so and cool. yeah, and then eventually I got into the, uh, into that mask. Sorry, that's my dog. The, the, oh, the, fantastic! The I've got one of those here. that's likely to start doing the same thing. <laughs> He's like, oh, that's that's the key, that's the uh, that's my little girl coming home. I don't know if you know, I've got a I've got a little baby girl now. Oh, congratulations! She's a teeny tiny. She's only eighteen months old. Oh <gasps> my god! In a minute. Oh, beautiful! You can hear she um, uh, and we're such sci-fi geeks, dunks. We uh, actually call her first name Sky. Middle name Walker. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and then people think we're making it up. I'm like, no, no, that's no, that's, that's, that's it. That's, yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they want to know. The chat room is really eager to know. Scorp Warner specifically said a question for Duncan: How long did it take you to get into the costume, and then having your makeup done for the characters, which which which, uh, which required it? So all up, you played th three characters. Yes, in in Farscape, Empress Debbie. Yeah. Uh, yep. The diagnosis and Axacor. 
yeah yeah so star league was the was the the, the you know the character that i played the most obviously in the in that fourth season and then in the in the mini series so so that was um and and i think that was the that was the the, the most uh you know the most time consuming as far as getting in and out of the the costume and and the makeup and it we, we got faster was what, what was that how hot was it really really hot really hot because well you know you remember those that you know of course the those studios, which weren't really studios, they were just big tin sheds. These warehouses that they did, they, um, you know, that they they used for the for the shoot, and and so they they'd have these little tents where they would um, where we'd get in and out of the 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 costume at different points during the day, and they just blast these things with um, with air conditioners. They had these air conditioning units everywhere. But when you were when you were not in that room in that little tented room and and on set it was yeah it got it got pretty, on some of those hot sydney days yeah. when the, that whole tin shed just becomes an oven <laughs> it was yeah i i i, I remember i used to just drink gallons and gallons and gallons of water and uh, and what still about be those thirsty. those contact lenses too because they were full oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i had a bit of a yeah there was there's actually there's if you you know for the if you if you want to if anyone's looking out for it, there's, um, I think it's probably the second or third. Oh, may, no, maybe it's maybe it's the, towards the end of season four. But there is, I, I got, um, I had a problem with one of the, the contacts because oh. they were huge, great things, huge, great things that covered your whole eye. And and I got a scratch and, you know, I was not too, I'm, I mean, I was just like, just stick, you know, do whatever you need to do to me. I, I'm not very precious about those sorts of things and I was like oh it's a bit of a scratch in the eye I'm sure I'll be fine oh. and yeah the producers got quite quite um well I thought they got a bit panicky they were like all oh, right we need to get you to an optometrist <laughs> and you know get, and I was like okay is there, is there a problem eye out. Yeah, yeah, pull, pull your eye out um <laughs> and yeah so I, I I had I had to I had to miss the next day's shoot and everyone was very concerned but then but it, it really did get quite bad and then when I did get back on the set I was my eye was puffed up and I was sort of half closed and so there are these scenes with Starleek sort of looking like with, he's with gone, a droopy eye. Yeah, it looks like he's gone <laughs> ten rounds with with Ali or something. He's got a few sort of wax in the wax in the oh eye, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that was that was the yeah that that was that did get a little bit concerning at one point. So I thought, oh, I can, it was hard to see at one point, but uh, all good, all good. But yeah, it, it, to, uh, to answer that question. It, it used to. I think initially it was like three hours in the makeup chair. For, st for, st for Star League. For Star League, yeah. For Star and then, and, and then that got faster over time. It all got a bit. Because how strange. much? Because I was amazed at how the amazing, how much the prosthetics picked up. Was that that's not wasn't animatronics? That was because you're. Doing no, no, no. Patients. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. That was all. So, so they. So the first part of the process is going into the to the creature shop studio. Um, did you ever go into that that studio in in Botany that they they uh, worked in? Uh, uh, maybe in the early, maybe for yeah. the tummy cast for Neri. Yeah, I was okay. I was desperate to get in there, but I was like, "Give me teeth, give me fangs, give me tentacles, <laughs> give me." Yeah, I want because the, they had the creature shop set up in, at Homebush, and then they had did, they had another one at Botany, and yeah. the, they gave me teeth in the very beginning, but then I kept drooling and i spoke with a list so they're like okay lo lose <laughs> the teeth yeah, we, disaster. We, that's not working for us um yeah so i went out there and so the first thing that they did was for for the for the suit and for the mask they put you in a full body car so i was like literally just encased in latex with two straws coming out of my nose that was the only oh. way i could breathe and you wouldn't want to be claustrophobic and i'm not but even still i was like just breathe and get through this and so I was in there for about I was in the, un, under the latex for I think it was good like a good 45 minutes because it's got a set and then they build all of the the, the costume around that and, and obviously the mask but but because the the the, the mask is sh you know shaped around my face then it's very like in, it was even though it looks so Rude. full on yeah it was quite it was quite thin so any facial expression that I made tended to get picked up in um it was amazing yeah i was like yeah. this is and you're so good so 
talented to do like with all the bits <laughs> oh, and pieces wow. stuck on and the and I remember quite like I I would have a whinge that I couldn't hit my mark because I had tunnel vision you had bits stuck on up the nose in the <laughs> ears armor more armor than a mask then you had to look down this way I was like I don't I don't know how you did it that's extraordinary yeah I oh, look I lo- you know I enjoyed it because it's it was you know for me I I, I really loved that you, you know you go well I, you do a lot of you do a lot of I don't know um tv drama and it's very naturalistic and you've you know you guys everything's got to be played under and i play i either i used to either play the the bad guy the crim or the or the cop you know that was kind of where i where i tend to get past cast and so you know endless all of my career is kind of in these in these uh, you know interview rooms in police stations <laughs> on one side of the table or the other so then you get to do farscape right and you and you're seven foot tall in this most amazing get up with this huge red costume and this massive cod piece and all of that and you think well you know i don't think i don't think i have to abide by the rules of naturalism (laughs) you can really you can really go for it you're the frilling emperor and and do all of that it was great fun i absolutely love it yeah you play as a baddie Ah uh, well, it was a, you know, I, I, honestly, it was a, it was the most fun, most enjoyable job I have, I've ever had. Really? Oh, yeah, totally. Because because you know, but just because I mean, it was fa- fantastic people around you, like amazing crew. Um, you know, all of the other, and a lot, lot of the actors were, were you know, old friends oh, of mine. Like, Paul, Paul, yeah, oh, they, they'll go all right. Like Paul. <laughs> Uh, Goddard and I, you know, he's one of my closest friends. We see each other all the time. He works with me still a lot. So it's really, and you know, Ant obviously. Um, so so that 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 side of things was really was really fantastic. But also just the performance, you know, because you, as I say, you, it's it's like you no hold barred. You, you, I had, I mean, some of the lines I used to tell my tell friends. I'd go, I have to say you know, board their ship and annihilate them without mercy. And I thought, you know, when when do you get to ever say that in, <laughs> in an Australian soap opera or something yes, like that? Yes, that's, that's funny that really. you should say that because everyone's like, can we hear some voices? And I'm like, I don't know whether we're allowed to, but we just heard one. <laughs> and you want to give us well, some that, other... But, but I was like you, I had the teeth in, so I, I was just kind of, Whoa. I don't know what the, uh, but it was always a little bit like this. And then I'd have to go into post and, and redo it most of the time. It was amazing. I, we, um, in the last uh, panels that we did, because uh, it was the 20th anniversary last year, so I got to see Anthony over here and Lani and um, oh, yeah, a lot amazing. of the gang have been on the show and they were all like, uh, well, in one of the panels, we were talking about how epic uh, the show is and, yes, it, like Australia had never seen anything like it. You know, you have your cops and your robbers and your doctors and your nurses shows yeah, but this yeah, was like yeah. on the and the show could easily swallow people up they could be phenomenal actors but you get on that set and if you don't go 150 percent and beyond you'll just get washed away you know with all the other creatures and aliens and cretins and stuff so it was a real amazing opportunity for any actor to just go and really yeah play hard. yeah that's that's so true i think i i, I think i think i remember seeing some some rushes early on or or something and i just and I remember, I remember thinking that of myself, going, "Oh, gee, you, you've got to, you've got to play it much bigger," because a lot of the, just even the movement and things like that doesn't really read so well. Like if you're just kind of a little bit loose, or, yeah, or yeah. you know, yeah, you've got to, you've got to have a kind of a posture, I think, for it to, for it to be able to play through that that costume and into that reality. Um, I think it needed, well, you know, that was my take on it. Other people can judge whether that worked or not, but um, yeah, yeah, I mean, look, mostly it was just, as I say, it was, it was, it was just great fun, great fun. Loved every minute of it. That's even when I was, even when I had, you know, to sweat pouring, Drip, pouring from family. like four a.m. in the morning till eight. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> they're trying to reattach the glue. Of the, can you stop sweating? And I'm like, well, you know, it's not Your that easy. Down here. And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just looking over here. I don't think I'm being distracted. It's where no all the worries. chat room questions are coming in because yeah, they're yeah. coming in hard and fast. And they all they, this this team's amazing, but they get very grumpy if I don't get through all their questions. Okay, so good. Like, okay, guys. Okay. I'll shut up. Um, no, no, you're amazing. It's me. I go beep, 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 beep. And then when I was three, anyway, Captain Calvin Cat uh, is says question for Duncan. What were your exams for the Bachelor of Fine Arts English at Sydney University and and NIDA? And he wants to know. 
what NIDA is, Bachelor of Fine Arts Acting. Okay, okay. So, Good so question. NIDA is yeah, NIDA is uh, um, the Australia's sort of national drama school. So it's um, the biggest drama school. Um, I, I guess the most the most prominent there there are there are a number of really great acting acting schools in Australia, but but NIDA, so you know, um, not that I want to put myself in this league at all, but you know, like Mel Gibson and Kate Blanchett, and you know, all, all of um, although Hugh Hugh Jackman uh, went to Whopper, so that's that. Uh, no, I remember NIDA was never happy with that. They were like, oh, you should have come to NIDA. Are they kind of brother sister, Whopper and Nida, or they're not well, Whopper's Whopper's in Western Australia, so that's on the other side of the country to Sydney. But they're the so, same. Well, they're the same. Yeah, basically, they're both they're both acting schools. You you get a you get a you know a, a degree and degree in acting for whatever that's worth. Um, but it's a three year three year acting program, and yeah, so so Nida is is the sort of most. I suppose the most famous one, Whopper, is, is a really fabulous school. There's there's the VCA down in down in Melbourne, so there's a few dotted around, like as there as as there are in the states. But um, yeah, so night is night is an acting school. You don't really do an exam. You do you do um, you do lots of productions. You do lots of classes every day, six six days a week, generally kind of you know from eight in the morning till six at night, really intensive. And if you didn't perform, they'd kick you out, you know, if you didn't. Uh, so those was a really high attrition rate. So people, you'd get in, and that was one thing, because thousands of people auditioned. And I, and I had never really acted that much when I auditioned for, for NIDA. I'd done one play, and I thought, oh, I'll give this a crack, you know, because I, I like, like the idea of being an actor. And, I, you know, I, I, I somehow got in. And, um, and then just sort of, you know, I thought, well, I'm, now that I'm in, I don't want to get kicked out, because a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty full on. It's really intense, uh, but you know, like an amazing experience. And you just, you, you never act as much in your career, I, I think, and you know, as when you're at drama school, because it's just every day you're in there, just learning, doing. It's fantastic. And and the the arts degree that was, um, that that's a that's a kind of a, I don't know, like a, um, a humanitarian degree that that opens up opportunities to get into all sorts of different careers uh, I did that at Sydney uni that was that was when I came out of school and didn't really I traveled I traveled for for a year and a half didn't really know what I wanted to do thought I'll go and do this degree see what it leads to I've never done much with it but um but you know because I went to NIDA straight I after that you're so, so two, effortless two you're like oh, I might just try this I might just try that done <laughs> <laughs> good job well, uh, now, know, we're lucky to live in a place where you can do that it is. It's Australia's absolute paradise, isn't it? Yeah. I, go, I, I go on it, about it a lot because it's a, it's a, it's really is a, a, a dream come true for an amazing place to live. Uh, so they want to know what would be the last role, the one that you said, uh, yes, you know what, this is the best one that I've ever done. Uh, so do you, do, was that like, um, in, in Farscape? Anywhere. Like oh, okay. In, yeah. In well, look, honestly, acting. yeah. So, so I, there was probably there's, 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 there's three experiences. We, we, if we're talking about film or TV, um, because I've done lots of theater and, and that's, that's a whole different experience. And, you know, for me, theater, the joy of theater is, uh, you know, we, I did a lot of shows that traveled around the country and, and you, you form these incredible friendships and bonds with people that you're traveling on the road on tour with. So, yeah. so there was that side of thing. Theater, I, theater, I, 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 I remember I went back cause I hadn't, I hadn't been on stage for, I had kids. And so, you know, it's not a, it's not a great job to be doing when you've got young kids is, is you know, having to go to the theater every night. So, so I didn't do theater for a long time. Um, after about 10 years, I got asked to do a play. I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have a go. And I, you know what I found? I thought after the first week, I thought, oh, gee, I've got to just turn up and do this again and again and again. So I love film and TV because, because, it's, because it's always moving. You're always doing something different. It's not, it doesn't have that repetitive nature that the theatre does. But the three things for me, there was an Australian TV show called um, Wild Side. So this is going yes. right back. You know, yes. years and years ago when I left drama school back in the 90s, it was a cop show. It was really kind of quite cutting edge. And I was, you know, I was lucky enough to have a, uh, a, a role on that, that that, you know, went on for a period of time. I was the 
you know, the offsider to the to the to the to the main starter, Tony Martin. Uh, really interesting storyline. Uh, so there was that. There was Farscape absolutely as a highlight. And then the last the last film I did was a thing called Beneath Hill 60, an Australian film directed by Jeremy Sims. Oh, he's the best, Girl isn't 60. he? Yeah, Good old yeah, Simsy. Yeah. Good old Simsy. <laughs> and, and that was, you know, it was, a, it was a film that wasn't without its flaws, but as far as an experience of, of, of shooting that, um, and, and I, I had a, it was a funny, it was a funny one because he, he, Jeremy said to me, he said, oh, Dunk, I've, I've got a, I've got a role for you. You know, you've, you've, you're the person to play this role. And I thought, oh, fantastic. I got the script and I'm reading the script. I'm like, I'm like the first five pages, the, my character, Tom, was really prominent. I was going, wow, this is an amazing yes. role. What a, and then I get to page 10 and, you know, <laughs> Tom's in a tunnel and a bomb goes off and that's the Great. end of Tom. Thanks, I was like, oh. <laughs> But for those 10 pages, I tell you what, yes. it was amazing. Uh, so um, back to the land of Farscape. So yeah. when you when you did the first character, did you have any idea? I mean, I guess not because then uh, so then then you came back to do the diagnosis and, and then Stalik. Yeah, yeah, that that was the order of it. Yeah, I, I think that's right because I, I and I think the diagnosis was was um, the, the the head was was animatronic. So I mean, really, I was like a. You know, kind of was like a puppeteer in a in a suit. So, so somebody was controlling all of the 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 mouth and the facial expression, and I was, you know, I was just basically in the suit moving it around. Um, I, and I I, I I seem to remember that I, I I would speak the dialogue, but the the animatronics would then sort of kick in and yeah yeah yeah. So that was um, and I you know I and I think I think part of why. You know, I think part of why I got it, I kept getting invited back is because, um, and and I got a bit of this feedback. I, I think it's because I try, you know, I just I try and be as undemanding as possible. You know, like I'm uh, when when I'm on a set, so just to be the person that's that's making life easy for the for the crew because I think that that's and and maybe that's because maybe that's because of my brother and I know that that sort of you know that side of things and I and I when when I was much younger. I used to, when I was working my way through university, I used to um, work with him sometimes. So when they needed an extra pair of hands to carry lights around and things. So I spent a lot of time on sets um, behind the scenes. Uh, so, so I kind of have, a, have an understanding and appreciation of, of, of the world of the crew. And, yeah. you know, when you, and I know that when, you know, it's any, anyone that was difficult as an actor would be like, oh, you know, could you, could you just make it a little bit easier for everybody? Where's so my I, fan? Where's yeah, my blue yeah, yeah. M&Ms? Where's yeah, my hot yeah, tub? That's right. That's right. I'll take them all out of my rider. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I, I have a, a memory of the, the read through that we did with the diagnosis and the gentleman who's such an amazing actor. Is it Hugh who played Grunchlick as memory serves? <sighs> Grunchlick Hugh, uh, uh, he, uh, he was like. Oh, just, yeah, yeah. Remember Hugh, Grunchlick? Hugh, where Hugh there was always, Byrne. Yes. Yeah, he, who I, was in the original Mad Max. Yes. Yeah, I, and I, I was I'm, like, oh, my God, you're the guy from Mad Max. I was like. He was the bomb. And I, from from what from what I remember, he came onto that the set smoking a cigarette and did the line run through smoking a cigarette. And we're all like whoa this guy's cool yeah bold choice <laughs> right like yeah totally bold choice and yeah. i'm like whoa i'm waiting for someone to lose it and stuff and no one did everyone's just like okay cool let's no go and, and my memory is that he was he, he you know he was always about you know 65 percent on the script yes as far as accuracy was and 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 the, the, there was 35 percent was just like I don't know what's going to happen, but just go with it because he was amazing. So good though, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, just yeah. so good, just e yeah. so real and so eerie. And so I, I find Tony Hayes a lot like that as well. That came yeah, from yeah. yesterday as well. Like their characters are so organic. Every take is completely different. And some actors I, I think have challenges because you know, you used to, you, so you, and you just go with it. And that, and I think one of, one of the many amazing things about Farscape 
is that they allowed us so much artistic license. Like a lot of the time they trusted us to do what we wanted with our characters. And if there was Definitely. improvisation, they just let us in, embrace it. Like that scene that was so disturbing. Like I'm going through watching all your stuff and I'm like, oh my God, how traumatic. So <laughs> in a great way where the diagnosis is um, going through Crichton's brain and like literally, do you need this part? You know, kind of thing. And he's like, what is it? Oh, my dog's not necessary, but keep it if you can kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so what part could you lose if you had a diagnose and dissecting your brain? Uh, oh, gee, there's a few memories I, I could probably <laughs> do with losing. Um, delete. Delete. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, uh, we, I, although I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job of that myself because as we're coming out of isolation, <laughs> And we're allowed to go back to bars and things like that. I, I had a night out a couple of weeks ago where I think Good I... Good boy. Yeah, I think I managed to delete a few Good, There you go. Yeah, Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like my own diagnosing, right? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Job done. <laughs> so if you had a special alien power, what would it be? Oh, gee. Oh, what would it be? Um, <laughs> Uh, you, you know, I think I think the obvious one is, and I don't know if this is particularly an alien power or a superpower or whatever it is, but you know, I think the the obvious one is to go to be able to see into the future somehow and you know get get next week's lottery numbers or something like that. But I don't know. I, for me, I think that that sort of you know that would take away most of the enjoyment of life, which is not knowing what's what's around the next corner. So, um, I what would I like to do? This is not. Hmm. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind because you know I mean as I'm I can be prone to a bit of laziness and I'd like to be able to kind of I, I like the Jedi mind power thing of being able to move things without just yeah. being able to stay on my couch and just sort of do a lot of that. <laughs> just, just chill just out. Get well, stuff done. To, yeah, get stuff three done. Three months of that. Yeah, I'm trying to. I've been trying to. I've been trying to train my children into you know go and get that, and they just they yeah. can be your Jedi mind mind power. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't go down too well though. I've got I've got two teenage daughters, and they're like, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> like, Dad. Whatever, Dad. Yeah. So have they seen your Farscape eps and stuff? Do you know what? Uh, for for years we I didn't show them because I thought I <laughs> I didn't want to scare the hell out of them. But my daughter, my eldest daughter, wants to be an actor, and oh, she's really? just she's oh. just graduated. She, she's in her last year of high school, so mine's yours is eighteen months. Mine's about to turn eighteen, so wow. we're at the other end of the experience. So, yeah, so uh, she's just started to say, "Oh, can I see some of the old stuff that you've been in?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." So, but I haven't. I, I don't think I've showed them any Farscape, but I will. I will. Oh, They've seen the on. pictures and everything. Yeah. Really? What have you shown her? What have you shown her? Uh, I did a. I, we we were on. Um, we've got one of the the subscription, the Australian subscription, um, pay to, you know, the um, streaming services here. It's a thing called Stan, and there was an old, the old under one of the old Underbelly series. Yes. Uh, I was. I had a had a part in one of those, and just because it was on, I was like, oh, hey, Lil, have a look at this, and she was like, oh, yeah, that's all right, Dad. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks. Um, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, but most of my old stuff, you know, is this is this is showing my age. Most of my old um, my show reel material is is on VHS, and I don't know how to play those anymore. I've got to get on VHS as well. <laughs> like, I'm like, like in the I'm, store. I'm show them, yeah, you show those to your kids, and they're like, "What the hell is that? What, what is that? What device yeah. is that?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you did water rats as well. Yeah, that was early yes. on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very early on. Uh, so you were just to get a guestie on that, or yeah, guesses. I, I, I mean, that was you know, it, it's as you would know, it's the classic jobbing actor uh, where you tend to get because of the nature of the industry in Australia. It's not like over in LA where there's, there's actually, you know, there's there's not a lot going on. So there are there are there are shows we, we that the, you tend do to do the, the rounds on. Yeah, and you you do come back as different characters. There was a show called All Saints. Um, yes. You ever did you ever do All Saints? Uh, no, I didn't do All Saints, but I did yeah. Water Rats. Yeah. W Water Rats was actually my first, like, proper, it was, was it, wasn't it Faith, was it Faith Martin that was the cast? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That? Good old and Faith, I, yeah. Oh, man, I love, I, I feel like in my early days, because I didn't really, I just knew how to, because I, I auditioned for NIDA and I didn't get in. And the guy told they're me fools. to do this. They're fools, Jim. Oh, fools. 
but I, the, I, I not? not not so I was a QUT girl. So strangely enough, Anthony Simcoe was my teacher the year before the new teacher came in. Uh, of course, because he's a Brizzy boy. Yes. So um, anyway, so for the so so when he left, they brought in a method. Uh, teacher, so we were just hardcore method yeah, actors, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I didn't give a crap about casting agents or getting on a show or getting off a show. I could act and I could act, you know. Like, and I think that that kind of helped me in a way that I didn't give a frail, to put it politely, because yeah. I was like, whatever. And you're just brave and silly, and yeah. so the first character I played was like this junkie that was, you know, had Maggie Kirkpatrick as the as the sugar mama. Awesome. And, you know, I was a strumpet or whatever, and I just got to embrace it. And then they called me and they said, I've got the role. I was like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then after that, it was Farscape. And it was like you for one episode. And then, thank the gods, they kept, the phone kept calling. And I'm like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. You? Yeah, I think there was, I think there was, uh, you know, that's what, one of the things, I mean, you talk about the organic nature of, of the show, and I think that that was true of the script writing as well, because I think they would, you know, as I came to understand the process of it, they would, people would come on and, you know, they would, they would hit a certain note that they liked and they go, oh, okay, we can develop that character and take it somewhere. I think it was the same with Paul Goddard. He, he wasn't going to be on it for, he, I think he was only scheduled to do a few episodes to begin with and then ended yeah. up being one of the main main characters he's so cool we've been on some very funny signing adventures you know <laughs> stranded across the seas like oh, where are we what's going yeah, on yeah yeah he's a great so, man he's a great he's man. a great man uh, when did you realize the magnitude of farscape how 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 huge it was was, was like how because i wasn't really playing in australia when we were on no no i you know and i wonder i wonder if i if i i mean because one thing that I, I i mean i've been to the states but not not um, under the, I think we, there was, there was a, I got asked early on once I, you know, when I just started doing, I think when the first couple of episodes had aired, there was a conference on in, in Sydney. Um, and I got invited along to that. And, and I, and there was, you know, there was a lot of people turned up and I was like, oh, right. You know, like, and I'm not sure how they were watching it. Obviously they were, had some means to, you know, get it, get it off the internet if if that was even a thing then. But there was a lot of people there, and 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 I and that that was, I guess that was surprising. I mean, I'd love to, I'd love to, you, you know, I'm not sure if they're still going on, but the conferences in the states, yes, yeah, uh, they're amazing. They've, they've gone because I've literally been doing them over here almost every weekend, and they're so amazing, oh, wow. and met these beautiful fans left, right, and center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, it's all ground to a halt now. Where the world sort of inside out and back to back to front but there has yeah. been serious talks of farscape coming back i don't know if you've heard Dunks well there's been they... lots of yeah there's been lots of rumors that we've heard lots about uh, about you know uh, you know making another season or yes. you know making a movie there was a lots of talk there was about a couple of years ago there was lots of stuff on facebook around the possibility of a movie and because i i stay in touch with um Dave and Lou from the Creature Shop, and so they were always because I did a couple of jobs with them after Farscape. I was because they to, said, yeah, that's yeah, on, yeah. On my yeah. Facebook page when I've advertised announced you that it, Dave's like, oh my good friend Duncan Young, we've yeah. had some very fun times on Farscape, and after that too. So what were, we what were the other projects? Well, we the 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 the, the, the most um, amazing one was um, we went to China um, in. <sighs> to Shanghai and shot an Xbox film. So there was a, there was this, um, it was incredible. Like we, 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 we had, we had a week in China and of that week, we only filmed for two days and we had somebody showing us around. So we were like tourists staying in this nice hotel and we went out to set and it was, we drove miles out through the city and into the countryside. And then we got to this, um, you know, the studio, which, and I guess this is just testament to the to the amount of people and resources that the the Chinese could throw at this sort of thing, and they had replicated this this town that had been sort of destroyed by by war and and because it was the Xbox film I can't remember I, I, the I can't remember what it, what what um, what it, what the game was but basically there were there was a war going on and so there were all these kind of demolished buildings and 
and I played this demon character. So they, you know, fitted in <laughs> all of the uh, all of the costumes. It was about a million degrees. Uh, that was that was the hottest I've ever been in one of those suits. I have to say. Oh. And um, and then the other thing, the other thing I did with them was a was a commercial TV commercial. We went over to um, to uh, New Zealand and filmed it up in the ski fields of Queenstown. It was a, and I played a yeti. So if anyone's seen um, the Hendersons the, with the with the Yeti, yes, oh yeah, my yeah. god, yeah. So I was, you know, it was hilarious going up in the ski lifts with all of the skiers. <laughs> you know, like I'm this huge, like it was all these skiers going by, going, "What the <laughs> is that?" And I, speaking of interesting uh, productions that you've worked on, I was looking through your IMDb and I saw a title called "Don't Blame the Koalas." Oh gee, really? Yeah. No idea. What, <laughs> what is that? that? What is been? that? I was like, I'm, yeah. I'm, what kind Don't of project is that? Koalas. Yeah. Who's who's who wants? Who would think of blaming koalas for anything? <laughs> That's not you. That's uh, look, the... it may well be. It may well be. <laughs> there, were, there was, you know, there was, there was so many things that you would do that were. It, it, it favors for friends. Yeah. And I, other well, projects I think, that led on to I, other I projects. I think what and... that might have been was, you know, like a. a if I think it, because I've, I've got a memory of of doing a doing a show that might have been that one was it was a kids show. Oh, yeah. I've got, I'm going to find footage and send it to you. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, <laughs> we really don't have to. But see how you go. Yeah. So, where can people find you, Dunks, and 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 are you on social media or or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the yeah. So I've um so I I've got a I've got a, a private um Instagram account uh but um I'm on. I've got a I've got a, a public Instagram account through my business, which is Duncan Young Consulting. So you can find me there. Um, obviously, this is all. I mean, whether whether this is of interest to people, all of the kind of the corporate training side of things, I don't know. But I've got a yes, I've got a, yes, yes. A, a LinkedIn profile which you can find me on. I don't do much tweeting, I have to say. Um, Facebook, I'm on. So yeah, I'm around and about. All right. Well, you're amazing. It's so good to see your beautiful face. And so great to see you big, too. Big yeah. love to the family and thank you for giving us all your time. The chat room's just giving you lots and lots of love and, and yeah, nice speaking with you. Straight, straight back at all of you. It's Yay. been, it's been a delight. All right. Well, have a good day. You too. Take care. Bye. Say hello, to say hello to Australia for me. I will. I will. I will. <laughs> They're all gathered around. I'm, I'll yes. go out there now and make the announcement. <laughs> Bye, Doug. Hey, Gigi. Take care. See you, everyone. Yay, Duncan. He's the best. Yes. So there's beautiful Duncan Young. What an amazing man. Huge part of sci-fi history, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so you can connect with him over Instagram. Ah, get my camera phone up. Uh, you can connect with him over Instagram or uh, social media. So I saw my brother has snuck into the chat room. I saw you there, Edge. Hello, Edgy, I wasn't ignoring you. Nice to see you. Uh, so many cool things. Hey, listen, um, uh, I'm gonna sing your song to wrap it up, but before that, uh, so Saturday is actually 4th of July, I believe. Is that correct? for all of the Americans here, all us Americans, because I sound so American. It's Saturday, 4th of, 4th of July. Yes, ma'am. So Saturday, I'm actually going to have a day off because uh, Dad was meant to come in on Saturday, but then I thought, oh, we might not have all of you guys because people would be doing family stuff and firework stuff and everything. So I'm going to have a, a day with Skywalker, if that's okay. Uh, why, why are you looking younger? Uh, it's because of the Vaseline I put over the, the, the filter. <laughs> so I'm asking for the day off on Saturday. Um, uh, thank you so much. Do it, do it, because I need some Mummy Skywalker time. But uh, I will have my dad uh, come in next Saturday. And I, I want there to be, I really want you guys to come and, and visit with him because he's just an amazing man. And I didn't want to put him off this week, but I wanted to make sure that we get a, a good crew in to, to welcome him to the land of Twitch. So dad won't be coming this Saturday. We'll have a day off this Saturday. 
and he'll be coming in next Saturday. Uh, our guest next week, uh, because you guys requested it, will be Guy Gross, uh, the composer, the uh, music man of Farscape. Uh, after many, many requests, uh, he contacted me. I believe it was through Scaper Lee, so thank you so much. Hi, Howard, nice to see you. So he will be our guest on Thursday. And then tomorrow, because we're not doing Saturday, we'll watch the next episode of Liars, Guns and Money. So spread the word far and near. Also, we've been doing our Zoom chats on Tuesday at 3 p.m. And also at uh, Tuesday at 3 p.m. And Friday at 6.15. So this is where you can pick up a ticket to come and hang out with us on Zoom. It's been lots and lots of fun. And I heard uh, through uh, other people, namely Tex Odo, that he's been doing meet and greets for quadruple the price, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so it's lots of fun. We all hang out and talk about life and we talk about each other and we talk about silly stuff and not so silly stuff. and. It's really cool because there's no moderator or anything. It's just um, all of our beautiful faces together having a chat. So come and join us uh, tomorrow after the Twitch session at 6.15. And now I'm going to sing you a beautiful little song. So, uh, <laughs> Okie dokes. Hello, hello, hello. Shake your money maker, shake your money maker, shake your money maker. Gonna shake your money maker like this. Shake your money, shake your money, shake your, shake your, shake your, shake your, shake. Won't be true. 
true. I got a cat and he just won't be true. I got a guy and he just won't be true. Says he's gonna love me, but I don't think he will. Gotta shake that mud maker. Shake that mud maker. Shake that mud maker. Gotta shake that mud maker. Gotta shake that mud maker. legends and sweetnesses and thank you beautiful anonymous i really appreciate it if you're new to the channel make sure you press the follow button so you can tell when we go live subscribers uh, oh that means discord for saturday all right so hmm, we'll have to do hmm, okay so we'll do our discord session then instead of doing it on saturday we'll do it on tuesday Okay, so we'll have the Zoom on Tuesday and then we'll do Twitch and then after Tuesday on Twitch, 6.15, we'll do our Discord session for our subscribers. Okay, yes, thank you for reminding me. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, hi, Squeaky. Oh, come in. Hi. Want to stand up? Say hi. 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 Oh, do you want to listen? You want to be yourself? Say hi. 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 Can you say hi? Say hi, everybody. <laughs> We're a bit big, aren't they? Can you hear? Oh, sorry about that. Sorry. Can you stand up so everyone can see a cool dress? Bye, guys. Have a good day. Do you want to stand up so they can see your dress? Oh, standing tall, standing tall. Hi. It's a bit big, isn't it? <laughs> Hi, guys. Have a good night. We love you so much. Thank you for popping in. See you tomorrow at um, 5 p.m. for Liars, Guns and Money. All right. Say bye. Bye. We love you. Say I love you. Mwah. Bye. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Wee. Wee. Say bye. <laughs>